Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to build a four function calculator in C++. Now, if you've been following along with this course, you'll know that in the beginning of the course, we created a very simple calculator. And basically that calculator was able to take in two numbers as input and it added them together and printed out the answer. But in this tutorial, now that we've learned a little bit more in the C++ language, we're going to build a more complex calculator. So this calculator is going to allow the user to enter in two numbers but it's also gonna allow the user to specify which operation they wanna perform. So they can specify that they wanna add the numbers or multiply the numbers, divide them, multiply them, whatever. So it's essentially gonna be a more powerful calculator. So down here, inside of my main function, I wanna start writing the code for this. And the first thing I'm gonna do is create a few variables. So I wanna create a couple variables and why don't we just create these as ints. You could also make these doubles if you wanted. Um, we'll just call them num1 and num2. And these are gonna represent the two numbers that we wanna perform the operation on. And then down here, we're also gonna to wanna to create a character and I'm gonna call it op for operator. So we're gonna store the two numbers here and we're gonna store the operator here. So it's either gonna be plus, uh, minus, division, or multiplication. All right, so now that we've created those two variables, we wanna start writing the code to get the input from the user. The first thing that we wanna do is print out a prompt. So I'm just gonna say C out, and I'll basically just print out enter first number. So we'll prompt them to enter in the first number. And then down here, we're gonna use C in. And remember, you wanna use these two greater than signs. And we want to store the user's input inside of num1, just like that. Okay, cool. So now that we got num1, I'm actually just gonna copy this code. And then down here, we can paste it two more times. So down here, we're gonna ask them for the operator. So I'll say enter operator, and we're gonna store the operator inside of that op variable, just like that. And then finally, we're gonna enter in the second number and we'll store it inside of num2. So basically what I'm doing is I'm prompting the user for all of the information that we need. So we're gonna get that first number, we're gonna get the operator, and then we're gonna get the second number. So they'd give me like five plus two or six divided by seven or something like that. All right, so now that we have all of that information, we have one more thing that we need to do, which is we need to figure out what the user wants to do. Right over here, we have the operator. So ideally they would have entered in like a plus sign, a minus sign, whatever, but we don't know what exactly they entered in. Like we don't, we have no idea what, what they were gonna enter in. So we need to figure that out. And this is a perfect scenario for an if statement. So I'm gonna use an if statement and I'll show you guys uh, how we can check this. So I'm just gonna say if, and we need to put a condition in here. Um, so basically what we wanna do is we wanna figure out what that operator is. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just check to see if the operator is equal to a plus sign, right? So if the operator is equal to a plus sign, then we're basically just gonna print out the result of adding the two numbers together. So why don't we come up here and I'm gonna create an integer called result. And then down here, we'll set result equal to num1 plus num2. And we know that we wanna add them because if this condition's true, then we're gonna execute this code. All right, so now let's do an else if, and down here, I basically just wanna to check to see if it's a minus sign. So I'll say if op is equal to a minus sign, and if it is equal to a minus sign, then we can do exactly what we did up there, but we can subtract the two numbers. So I'll say num1 minus num2. All right, so we can do the same thing for multiplication and division. So I'm actually just gonna copy this else if, and I'll paste it down here. And now we'll say op is equal to forward slash, that means division. And then one more time, we're gonna do this for multiplication. So use this asterisk, and then here we're gonna multiply the two numbers. So now we're basically covering all of the operators. So if they enter in a plus sign, we got that covered minus sign, division sign and multiplication sign, right? We can cover all of those standard scenarios, but there's always the chance that the user entered in an invalid operator. So instead of entering in one of these, they just entered in some like, you know, random character. In which case I'm gonna use an else block over here. And this else block is gonna get executed whenever none of these conditions are true. So if none of the conditions are true, then we know they entered in an invalid operator. So I'm just gonna go ahead and print that out. I'm gonna say C out, and we'll just print out invalid operator. 
All right, so basically by the end of this if block, we should have a value stored inside of result. So down here, we're just gonna print it out. So I'll just say C out and we'll print out result. All right, so let's see if our program works. I'm gonna go ahead and run the program and it says enter first number. So why don't we enter in a five? Enter operator, let's enter a plus sign and second number, why don't we do 30? So now when I click enter, hopefully our if statement's gonna execute. We'll be able to figure out which operation I was trying to do and then we'll be able to perform it correctly. So you see down here, we printed out 35, so it looks like everything worked. So why don't we try a couple other ones? Let's do like 50 divided by five. So down here we get 10, yeah, so it looks like that's working. All right, let's check one more thing. Let's check to see if we enter in an invalid operator. So I'm gonna put like a five, we'll enter the operator, let's make it like a capital G, and then we'll put a nine for the second number. And you'll see down here, it prints out invalid operator. And then we're also getting this other little printout here. And actually that's just because we didn't give result, we didn't give result an initial value. All right, so that's basically our four function calculator. You guys can see how we can combine getting input from the user then we can use these if statements to basically figure out what the user input and that can be extremely powerful. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.